guys welcome back to my channel and back to a new vlog hold on one second let me just put this down put my makeup bag here oh, there's a fly in it. open the window and a fly flies in just as i'm about to film come back yes guys it's hot it's hot i have been living in this what well, i say dress from abercrombie it's actually not a dress it's a um like a little play suit it's got little like the liner which is this linen the inner liner part is this linen but with shorts i don't know about you but when it's hot in england i just can't stand anything tight <laughs> or uncomfortable so if they still have it i will leave it linked in the description box for you i thought i could just pop on a little bit of makeup this morning nothing too heavy we're just pretty much at home today i was planning on meeting a friend for a bit of a dog walk but with it being forecast to be highs of 31 it's just too hot for them so we've rearranged for in a couple of days time so hopefully it'll have cooled down a bit by then i'm just using my clarence bb cream in zero zero this does have spf 25 in it but i have my spf already on anyway um slept funny on my neck you know when you um it almost feels like it needs to crack but it's been really bad i i did it maybe night before last and it definitely has improved like that first day my goodness i couldn't even move my head <laughs> but um it's definitely improved drastically but how are we all Tom is at Glastonbury with some friends this weekend. I know a lot of you will probably be thinking, oh, what, you didn't go? Like, oh, what a shame. It's just not my thing. <laughs> I just cannot hack. The crowds, the busyness, the heat. I'm not that into like a music in terms of a lot of the acts that are on. Now, if Sabrina had have been there. <laughs> no, even then, I just... I can't do it it's almost like panic central for me and as a nervous overthinker anxious person anyway the thought of being in a crowd like that and I have been to one festival I went to park life when I was at uni and I think it's the emetophobia <laughs> creeping in if, if you know what I mean if you have emetophobia you'll know what i mean if you don't know what emetophobia is it's fear of like even the word sick sickness um i've never like i know no one likes it obviously but it's a fear of mine and if you have it and you will know any incident where you've been in a situation in your past where you've maybe seen someone be sick you've been sick yourself or even just seeing sick on the pavement it's almost like you're looking for it with a metaphobia it's horrible um yeah every time you've been in that situation oh, sorry to start the vlog off with this chat by the way it's actually kind of grossing me out i will move on in a second um any time you've been in a situation like that it's it's ingrained in there you remember you remember it and I'll always remember going to Park Life Festival in Manchester with some friends. Loved my outfit, you know, back in my uni days. And we had fun with it. As soon as I got there, within an hour, saw someone run. And I was like, oh, what's that guy running? <laughs> Even just saying it out loud, I, I can visualise it. Projectile vomiting. And I just thought, get me out of here. And I left. And I've known that I'm at a festival since. Uh, no, to be fair, I did stay long. I didn't go straight away, but I definitely, I remember leaving early. And that haunts me. It haunts me. That visualisation haunts me. So anyway, Glastonbury? No, no, no. Not for me. I will watch from the TV. Have you been watching it? Is it something that you've been to yourself? Did you enjoy it? Are you a festival goer? I am not but anyway so that's why he's gone with his friends and um obviously he would love it if I was there with him but honestly I would just be more of a hindrance than anything they have gone in a camper this year though so 
yeah, last year Tom went for the first time ever to Glastonbury and they went in tents and he said never again. Sorry, my battery just died. I think that was uh, the universe telling me to move on from festival talk. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, yeah, so today I thought I would pick up my vlogging camera. I'm just using Hula Bronzer. Should I give you a bit of uh, what I'm doing with my makeup re recently? So obviously I've just shown you. <sighs> Need to sneeze. <coughs> Hay fever this year has been on another level. Has anyone had the vaccine and did it work? I know that you um, can't get it on the NHS anymore, I believe, which is kind of like making me think I won't get it because if the NHS don't like it, apparently it's not even to do with funding, they just, they won't do it. You have to go private to get it. It's making me think, why is that? Did a little bit of conceal. I'm just using a collection. One, I'm running out of this one though, so I need to pick up another one. This is basically their normal one, but it's got the serum, hydrating serum in it. Um, but yeah, very minimal makeup, not too much, because honestly, I end up sneezing most of it off throughout the day <laughs> through hay fever um, and itchy eyes and stuff as well. So yeah, I, um, I'm not horrendous, horrendous with it. However, for the first year ever, I've, I've felt it. Tom, bless him, does really suffer and he said he's gonna try the vaccine, I think, next year. But um, for me, I think I might just, the odd tablet here and there and eye drops I've found helped um, and then a nasal spray. That's just like what I stick with. Um, anyway, these blushes, absolutely, oh, another fly. Get out. The Luminous Silk Cheek Tints by Giorgio Armani. I just do a dab of the darker one, which is shade 62. And then 53, which I think was bold pink, if I remember rightly. Um, it's like a brighter pink. I just do a couple of dabs of this one. Do it right on the apples of my cheeks. But what I like to do with my blusher brush, by the way, you don't need to buy two. It's only because they sent me two. I think if I was to buy one, I would get this brighter one. Where is, here we go, blusher brush. What I do is just kind of stipple it right up my cheekbones and drag it across my nose. Any kind of leftover product that is on the brush. So it's quite a heavy look, but I'm loving it. As I have mentioned a few times lately, that heavier blushed Sabrina look is, definitely one that I am loving still so yeah that's kind of how I do my blush bit of highlight nothing too much again just a little light dab of the beauty light wand from uh, Charlotte Tilbury really pretty and it blends out really easily so um, again I tend to just use my finger with this because I feel like the warmth of your finger helps it blend out quite nice brows i'm just going to go in with the precisely my brow pencil from benefit we did order something very exciting but i'll show you that in a second Ooh, so excited to try it out and hope that i love it so i will be sharing with you guys i don't know if if, if in this vlog or maybe another upcoming video or even on tiktok or something but yeah I've made a purchase. Little powder, the Laura Mercier translucent one, just under the, that's where that concealer is. Small lines, chin, into T-zone. And then I always like to just, um, where my kind of bronzer is, just put it underneath for brightness. I just ha think it helps carve out that bronzer a bit better. So yeah, that's what I like to do. Mascara, I think I'm gonna go in with my brown Too Faced one. Just again, with lighter makeup, I always like to go with a brown mascara. I think it's a bit softer. I have been watching, I don't know why this reminded me of probably just doing my makeup. It's just made me think of it. But I've been watching on Netflix and just finished it yesterday. And I would say it's definitely worth a watch actually. 
American Sweethearts, I think it's called. It's a docu-series, I think about eight episodes, following the DCC, the Dexa, Dexas, <laughs> Texas, Dallas, Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders, DCC. And they're always just so well put together. I think that's why I was thinking um, whilst doing my makeup, but they've always got rollers in their hair, like full face of glam, lashes. I've never really been into lashes though, personally. I actually don't think they suit me. I think I've got odd shaped eyes, which is a really random thing to say, but because of that, wearing falsies highlights them. So yeah, I don't wear lashes. Let's go in with a little bit of lip liner. This is MAC Well. Kind of running low this one now. It's a nice kind of rosy pink. I have to take you out into the garden in a second, show you how it's looking. Not that much has changed, but I know the last video, the last vlog that I showed you, we'd just taken delivery of the Cox and Cox set. I've been loving this from Kiko. It's one of their 3D Hydra lip glosses, it's called, in the shade 04. A really pretty, corally, glittery, which I just tend to put a little bit in the sort of center of my lips. Quick spritz of some all nighter for the main reason that at the minute it feels nice and cooling and refreshing. And we're done. Oh, I've just come downstairs. I've just realized and remembered that I bought some bits from some pots from TK Maxx. In fact, whilst I'm speaking on the subject of TK Maxx, basically, Tom's discovered this brand called Folk in TK Maxx. So I need to return these because these are the two that he doesn't want. I literally went in after he saw one pair and brought them home from town and I was like, oh, I love them. And then I went to Home Sense and TK Maxx the other day and saw um, like, I want to say eight pairs in his size and I just bought them all for him to try on which ones he wants. And he's only sending these two back. So yeah, they just do some really nice shorts if you wanted to, if your man's after some new shorts. These ones are a bit more casual. He's kept these ones, but in the navy, 19.99. But the cream version, you can kind of see, I know what he means, but when you, you know when you try on a light, we've got a very thirsty pooch in there. You know when you try on light colored bottoms and you can see the outline of the pocket? So yeah, anyway, we're sending the cream ones back. They were 19.99, reduced from 105. And these ones were, let me see, I think she said she'd put the label in the pocket. Yeah, because it came off. 115 retail price down to 24.99. We checked online and they do have a sale on. The 115 ones are down to like 85. So to get them for 24.99 is really good. So these ones are slightly smarter pair. Um, but the other ones that he's kept, they're kind of more linen-y, um, relaxed fit, uh, just really, really nice shorts. I would show you the ones that he's keeping, but he's got them with him in Glastonbury. So anyway, I need to send those back, but because I just looked outside and remembered, I thought I might as well show you these pots that I bought for the garden. So we will obviously put them in their final homes very, very soon, but until this section of the garden is done, I just want to essentially keep all the pots and stuff out of the builder's way. So this is our garden, by the way, if you're new to my channel and or just want an update. So currently down here we have this corner sofa. This is the Cape Corner from Cox & Cox. We love it with the acacia table. But the plan for this was always to have it on the patio over here, which I think we still will do. Um, this patio section just needs to be grouted along with the steps as well here. This paving is from Cornstone um, and then a couple of the tiles at the bottom from Mandarin Stone need painting, uh, painting, grouting as well. And then we're having the gravel uh, delivered as like a final stage. So the builders are off, I think this week. So we've got another week or so of it looking like this before it gets finished off. But they're literally the two couple of stages left to do. So not much at all. Um, 
and then obviously that little section in there they're going to pop a little membrane down by the tree trunk and pop the same gravel onto that as well so the gravel's already on there it's a Cotswold gravel it's called we got it from a place called Offerton sand and gravel excuse the white powder along here I've just sprinkled some ant powder so it'll probably settle in or if not we'll rinse it off in a bit but I just need to we just seem to get loads of ants along here so yeah fingers crossed that'll work um anyway our herb beds at the back I'm going to do some wooden markers actually I'll do that with you in a second because I just want to have them all with the same labels just one of the little things that I take pleasure in so I'm going to do that but yeah for now all the pots and everything that we've got for the entire garden are just sat over there which will eventually I think be dotted around here as well I'm going to have some down here I've got an inspo image on the screen I'll leave it with loads of olive pots we can pop some with olive trees in or keep them empty but these are the sort of pots that I just love the aesthetic of that TK Maxx do so I decided to pick up a couple the largest one which is probably my favorite one this one was $29.99 and honestly guys it's huge I love it they did used to be cheaper these pots I've got some inside here that I have this little trio in this corner which I love but I remember these being sort of once upon a time that was like I think the biggest one was $6.99 um, but yeah obviously they're a bit more expensive now but these ones are slightly larger I, I suppose so anyway $29.99 for that one this one love the shape of this one this one was $19.99 beautiful we've got another little one which i might even pop um some flowers in and maybe set out on the table over there that could be quite nice uh and then that one is 9.99 they do have the drainage as well so they are built for outdoor use obviously i know i've got some inside so you can have them wherever you want but yeah i think we could get a little little pot of flowers on the table and then these there's actually two of them they're a really nice kind of almost plaster effect uh, I don't know if that'll come up on camera but tub plastic tub essentially 14.99 they were so I got two of those they come with a little stand as well like a drainage stand and I just love them I thought these ones I will pot some stuff in but sometimes the like with these pots I just think they look nice just on their own with nothing in them speaking of olive pots excuse me mr wet dog who's been on a, on a nice early walk this morning we're out by six weren't we so it's not too hot keeps taking himself inside because of this heat but yeah speaking of pots this olive tree that i potted looks like last night some kind of creature has got in and started digging in here because the <laughs> came down this morning and there's loads of mud everywhere so i'm not quite sure what's been in there but Maybe a bird fishing for worms or something, but I'll uh, clean and neaten that up. And then also we got, for this patio area, this kind of dark acacia wood, oh no, teak it is, teak wood set. It was $149.99 for this three piece. You've got like a foldable table, two chairs, and we're going to have these um, on this patio. So it'll be a bar, maybe a few plant pots. It'll be the only thing on this patio once we finish the garden because the Gosney, um, the oven that we've got over there, that is gonna go as part of the outdoor kitchen down there along with this table, that's going down there. This crate, now that we've had the herbs bed planted um, along that run, I think what I'm just gonna do is the ones that are thriving, I'm going, going to depot and plant over along the herb bed and then get rid of this crate because it's served its purpose but we don't use it anymore now so now that we've got the beds along there um, and then yeah we're going to have the nice dining table along there we can get some chairs so this patio will be completely clear which will be really nice and easy to be able to just jet wash clean it and then literally just have a little bistro sat over in the corner um for our little morning coffee obviously it gets the sun here in the morning as you can tell so it's quite nice to just have a little coffee up here overlooking the garden at first thing in the morning can't wait for this table to be down in place so that we can just have our patio back and just give it a good scrub i mean you can see along here it's just getting really grubby so we need to give it a good jet wash oh i love my pots so so much i need to just make a note of what 
herbs we have. I'm gonna go down and take a quick picture of them. Oops. And then get to marking these little wooden markers so that they're all matching. So yeah, aside from the ant powder, if we just ignore that for now, these are all the flowers that we've gone for along this bed. Some of them, I've just literally just given them a bit of a water. But wow, these ones are thriving. How pretty are they? They're all obviously quite small now. They will grow. I think the lavender's meant to grow quite big as well. The white lavender we've gone for. And then I've just popped some decorative bark along the top. I just think it finishes it off quite nicely. Got our little pots from Dobby's. These two were left with the house. That was actually in the ground we dug up that was left got our mirror a couple of little pots back here um again i think the um garden mirror which needs a clean i think that this is going to go over the other side of the garden got some more little antique pots here our fireplace this is why i want the fire pit this section to be more of a fire pit area with individual chairs again i'll pop some images on screen some inspo images of what i'm thinking with this kind of section being like a fire pit section but i have to admit whilst having this here we have really enjoyed this sort of outlook of the garden we've got some other big pots from home sense and dobby's little antique uh find at arthur swallows antiques fair which is where all these other pots and mirrors and stuff are from. This little sprinkler system is what we've been using to keep the new grass uh, nice and watered. We just need to get a strimmer. As you can see, our lawnmower hasn't gone into the corner. I have got a strimmer, but we need to buy a battery for it. So that's just on a list of things to buy. Anyway, let's have a look. You can see I've just watered these as well. A lot of you have been saying about mint to pot it or sorry, to plant it potted, which I haven't done. I'd already done this by the time that you guys had very kindly sent me that uh, little tip. So we've got a couple of mints, which like this is one of them, um, which we're just gonna harvest quite often. We do eat mint a lot. I, I'll just have like a jug of water with mint and lemon or even just mint on its own. So we will keep harvesting it and I will take note for future, even to the point where I might even think about replanting it with a pot. Well, I thought about it, but Tom said, no, it's fine. We'll just harvest it often. So we'll see, we'll see. But this is black peppermint. Yeah, black peppermint. So these are all the labels that I'm gonna re be replacing with the wooden ones. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna take a note of them all. This one needs trimming back this fennel the, the top part's fine but the bottom part as you can tell it's just wilting a little bit a, a little bit a lot we've got our basil which is thriving it's nice and bushy and fresh we just want it to grow up a little bit more in fact that's grown loads since we've already planted it oregano what else have we got these have all started flowering this one is uh lemon thyme regular time unfortunately our parsley is looking a little worse well but we have parsley up there so i might replant the parsley this one oh no there's no label for it where's the label gone oh no that's going to annoy me not knowing what it is oh found it coriander probably should have known that, that was coriander these are all the other ones that's actually gone quite big angelica lemon verbena oh yeah this has got quite big already lemon balm sage this is see this mint doesn't look like it's overtaking too much so yeah some of the others have grown a lot more than the garden mint so i think it should be fine i think that one and the black peppermint seem to be growing most in fact also that oh yeah okay well it's going to be thriving anyway rosemary we love rosemary we've actually harvested this quite a lot since it's been planted this one's starting to flower as well the tarragon um mexican Mexican, Mexican tarragon. We've got some mint basil. These bay trees tend to get quite big as well, but again, we use bay leaves quite a lot in cooking. The only thing is with cooking with bay leaves, you usually just need like one leaf. So we've got a lot, a lot of recipes in there. Oh, this stuff is a nightmare. It has been coming through so thick and strong we need to get a weed killer for it but we don't want to kill the uh 
the obviously the the herbs but yeah any ideas on what we can do getting rid of this look it's coming through here already as well look at it all here <gasps> That's so bad. I'm pretty sure Tom's got some weed killer. I'll get him to to put some more down. I never felt tomorrow closing in this fast oh, I guess time's in a rush. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back while I'm on a one way track. Now I done that makes me so much happier <laughs> i'll leave these little plant markers linked below i think they're on my amazon storefront but i'll uh i'll leave a link for you anyway and yeah so much better as you can tell this section is still very much a building site we've got some recycling to take we've still got the obviously the gardeners bits and bobs here this section down here has been storage basically a lot of the old if you remember the old shed that was here everything that was in there that we needed like building supplies which we're doing the garage with for the builders logs random bits of bob spot to be honest with you some of that could probably go but when we get around to it um but we also have this as a new little addition just for the storage for all the cushions for the furniture i love the color of it if i can find it i'll leave it linked um but it's like a nice beige with the kind of like brown lid obviously in there um the doors open as well you can obviously lock it and then i decided to get a second one because eventually we will at some point in the future probably have some kind of a fence here so that the garden section is a bit more secured and then this side of the fence so let's sort of the fence will go from this wall across to the fence with a gate opening into the garden area so then this area will be fully sort of you know like the bin storage maybe even a little shed for tools and the lawnmower and all of that kind of stuff outside of the garden when you're in there you won't see all of that bit it will be in here so these bins i'll get both of them built side by side for now i've just popped this one here out of the builder's way but we'll probably have them somewhere along here we will be getting as well a bit like this obviously this is old and will go um can you tell we've had a pigeon's nest <laughs> directly up there um all of these will get i don't know if they're going to get redone but they will get obviously all cleaned up repointing getting finished along here but this is very green at the minute because there was like a leak with the pipe at the top. That's been fixed now. But like I said, now it's been fixed and the pigeons have nested. We'll just at some point get that sorted and then have some iron kind of railings added back along here. Some new ones along with all along here. Hi Barney. <laughs> and, and this middle section, a gate opening into, so you go in and then down those steps into utility room or in, down those steps into the gym area in the basement. I say gym, it's like cinema room, spare room, potentially future gym down there. <laughs> and then we might even pop the ice bath, which I've yet to get out. That might go down there if we have like a little gym in there. I think it'd be quite nice space for it. The gravel as well, once that gets delivered, it will run around the perimeter here basically wherever the paving isn't the gravel will be and it will continue on along that full run into the drive at the front of the house i feel like i've fully brought you up to speed with things with the garden now and uh, hopefully fingers crossed next time we vlog it'll be finished and we can actually use it for hosting and dining out there oh it'd be so nice it will be lovely i mean whilst it's just the two of us we've just been we've been barbecuing just sitting and eating on that corner sofa in the uh, corner of the garden are you coming inside now coming to cool off because mummy's gonna go to tk maxx 
or you're gonna stay here. I'm just gonna take those shorts back, I think. <laughs> An excuse to go to TK Maxx. to return some bits you come back with more it's just the way it goes these bowls firstly i grabbed and thought would be super handy there's two of them i thought they'd be really handy for um because of the size of them for like salad bits for like barbecue season because we've got big mixing bowls and we've got obviously like cereal size bowls but these are perfect for just having like little cold sauce salads in or pasta salads, whatever. $7.99 they are. There's actually a little Lebanese restaurant not too far from us and we went there yesterday and that's kind of what inspired me to get those because the way that they have all the salads, different salads and stuff out on display in these sort of size bowls, I thought, oh yeah, we could do with some of them. So yeah, got some nice white ceramic ones. And then I saw this artwork and I was umming and ahhing and I decided to go for it because I thought at $12.99, even if I just put it to one side, find it a home in a bit. Or even now that I'm looking at it, the shelves either side of the TV, maybe as like a background photo or like artwork. Um, I think I'll take the glass out. That's what I've done with some of my other trove prints. And it just gives it that matte finish rather than getting a reflection and a glare off the artwork. So I'll take that out. But yeah, $12.99 for a nice kind of like antique gold frame a little countryside painting and i love now whenever i get a frame i always look for a frame with a mount i just think i just think that it, it's nicer um and speaking of frames with a mount i saw this and i thought it was really different let me take out the image because that's kind of throwing me off but it's basically a round shaped frame which i don't think i own a round frame 5.99 and it's got a gold rim like an antique gold rim and oh, this is where my neck's really hurting like look, trying to look up there and it's just so sore the mount is like a green like a dark green linen so yeah i thought that was really unique different and decided to pick that up for 5.99 so that was everything that i picked up from Te Tesco's TK Maxx and then like I said popped into m and I just whizzed through it's rare these days that I go to m and for a food shop and it's because Tom's away and I was in the area and I thought I'll pop in grab some salad bits because I love the salads that they do anything encourages me to eat a salad it's m and salads but when I do go to m and every once in a while I just pick these up because you just cannot beat them the chocolatey covered custard creams just if you haven't tried them please try them um anyway i also got for some breakfast we're all out of yogurt so i get the zero percent greek yogurt and also some balloon breeze which i like with a bit of granola and some honey 
um, I got some wraps. These are higher protein ones. And then, like I said, their salad options are fast. So I've got this one, which I think I'm gonna have this one today. Beetroot and feta with a beetroot and mint dip. Then I got a classic hot smoked salmon and new potato with lemon vinaigrette salad, along with the nutty superfood whole food. These are sometimes things that I have alongside like a wrap. And then these are good to heat up as well. So again, you can just pop some like chicken with this and it just be a nice spelt, black lentils, couscous, and edamame soybeans. And then we did get Mr. Barney a treat as well. Look at this guy. He is just loving life. Do you love the sunshine? Are you a happy guy? Yeah, mom. Let me sleep. Let me sunbathe. Look at him on his back with his legs open like that. You know, when he's on his back, because you can't see the darker gold, he looks quite light for a golden retriever. Dad, I remember when we went to go and pick him up, uh, meeting his his real mum and dad. I look naked there. I've got the dress on, I've just put my straps in. Um, yeah, his dad's like really dark red. Anyway, this is the book that we're on. Except I've forgotten a pen, I need my pen. I've started it already, the second Roxy Nafusi, but you just gotta get pen to paper with her books. And she does actually have a few sections within this book, book which is the second one, which are guided, sort of, oh, here we go. Let's see, I've got, I've got to read what I've written first. Answer these questions for yourself, which you could do at home if you want. Get a pen and paper. Describe when you felt most content, fulfilled and at peace. What were you doing, who was around you? So I've done a few bullet points. I put summer holidays as a child with no set plans, just family time, chilled, quietness. Walking in nature with my dog, listening to the birds singing, Bird song is just such a relaxing sound. Cold, crisp air whilst the sun is shining on my face. The sound of lawnmowers in the distance. The smell of barbecues and freshly cut grass. Again, scents. I feel like I'm very scent focused. I, 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 I have thought about this actually when I was in TK Maxx. Someone walked past me with a, a perfume that I used to wear and it just took me back to living in, when we lived in America. Cause I remember it was the perfume that I used to wear then I can't even remember the name of it, but I just was transported back to that place. So I really connect scents with memories. And then I've also done cozy winter evenings by the log fire, again, the smell of like burning log fire, playing family games, listening to people's stories as a background viewer without anything specific required from me. I'm just sat back listening, experiencing all carefree, worry-free, anxiety-free, swimming with turtles in Barbados. <laughs> that was something that came up enjoying a cocktail at sunset without feeling anxious. I still remember that moment to this day because I'm not a drinker, caffeine, alcohol, anything that's kind of like anxiety inducing, I just avoid now. And I remember that moment at happy hour after we'd been on the boat all day, our family friends had hired a catamaran. So it was just an absolute bucket list, pinch me type trip. But I remember beforehand being like, oh, boat, you know, like boats, one of those things that if anyone's gonna feel seasick again, back to the emetophobia, it's like worry, worry, anxiety. But it was, I remember that whole day not feeling anxious despite doing something that ordinarily would be anxiety inducing. And then not only that, but having a cocktail at happy hour, having a drink, dancing on, this, uh, on the beach at sunset. Tom was with me, my family was with me, we were family friends. I just remember feeling really just content happy at peace so yeah i popped that and i loved swimming with the turtles on that um trip as well but anyway there's my little gratitude thoughtful 
chat with you this afternoon. I love a bit of a catch up chat. That's why I prefer vlogging. I know I've done a couple of hauls recently and I've got a couple to come. This is just why I love vlogging so much. Oh, I just, again, that connection with you guys within a vlog. Oh, look at him. He's having a good roll. Happy roll. I guarantee within the next 60 seconds, I was gonna say he'll get up and go in the, in the shade. <laughs> I just know him so well. He loves to be outside, but this sun is just too much for him, bless him. Get that ear flapped back. Oh, <laughs> he heard me. <laughs> it's like he's just an extension of me. If there are any other sensitive skin girlies out there, I feel like you'll be able to relate. But that sitting in the sun probably didn't do me any good because I can just see on my legs and my arms, and I can feel it on my chest, prickly heat coming. It's been a long time since I've had prickly heat, and I know how itchy it can get. So I'm gonna pop to the pharmacy this afternoon, I think. Wash off my body, because I, I had some suntan lotion on, so just clean my skin, stay in from the sun today, have an antihistamine, and just get some cream, because when it gets itchy, my goodness, it's like, oh, it's, it's not good, it's, no, it's definitely not fun. Anyway, I thought I would show you finally the tool that I was talking about this morning, guys. Look what I treated myself to. Again, not using any extra heat in this weather, so I'll have to save it for another vlog, but. Oh, the Shark Flex Style. So I had a good look at reviews for the Dyson Air Wrap and comparison and the sort of comparisons between that and the Shark Flex Style, which I think is about half the price. Still an investment, don't get me wrong, but like the amount of tools and everything you get with it, you get a diffuser, which is good for like maybe like beachy holiday. I think I'm gonna take this whole set with me on holiday. Um, we've got the, the kind of blow dry brushes, the round brush, and then these are the ones that I really want to make use of is the, to get that blow dry look but it's actually a hair dryer as well so it really is an all-in-one tool let me know if anyone has tried using this in europe does it work for the do you have to get a voltage changer or does it just not work and i'm better off just not taking it let me know because if it works i'll take it to greece with me when we go on holiday very very soon just a couple of things that i've ordered off amazon that have just arrived it's kind of boring, but it's just one of those really long extendable uh, dusters because on our beam in our kitchen, the steel beam that we had put in for the extension, uh, on the top of it, I've just noticed a couple of bit of dust things, so I needed that. And then also, I, I bought this book thinking, I can see everyone talking about it on TikTok, let's give it a go, and it's called Icebreaker. I think this uh, author Hannah Grace has done quite a few different books but this one's meant to be kind of raunchy a bit of a love story um I'll read the back for you Anastasia Allen has worked her entire life for a shot at Team USA looks like everything is going according to plan when she gets a full scholarship to the University of California at Maple Hills and lands a place on their competitive figure skating team nothing will stand in her way not even the captain of the hockey team Nate Hawkins Nate's focus as a captain is on keeping his team on the ice, which is tricky when a facility's a mishap means that they are forced to share a rink with the figure skating team, including Anastasia, who clearly can't stand him. But when Anastasia's skating partner faces an uncertain future, she may have to look to Nate to take her shot. Sparks fly, but Anastasia isn't worried because she could never like a hockey player, right? And I opened it up on a page and I was like, Oh yeah, okay, that's raunchy. <laughs> Just saw a couple of words and I was like, yeah, okay. Anyway, I've got a couple of bits from the brand Votary. They have sent very kindly a couple of, oops, okay, paper everywhere. The Brightening Hyaluronic Serum. And then this one I'm intrigued to try is the Hyaluronic Self Tan Drops with Calendula and DHA. I think Calen, is that how you say it? Calendula. I think it's like a root of a flower or something like that anyway. It's meant to be really good for um, brightening. I also bought myself a top up of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I wear the shade 2.5 first, so 
I haven't had that for a while and I missed it. So I thought I would pick it up. And alongside that, I also ordered this. And I've seen online that it's meant to be really good for spots. It's basically a sulfur paste. So it's like a really liquidy. Can you see how liquidy that is? Like a white milky liquid that you pop on your spot, literally dab it on like overnight before bed and it dries out the spot for you. So I'll give that a go. I also got sent, see me itching there, I can feel myself. Oh. Um, I also got sent from Garnier. This is their, um, one of their, hold on one second. One of their Missler waters, but a limited edition packaging for Pride. There's a fly in here again. Okay, it's just gone. Uh, and they've also sent some, oh, I've never tried these, the reusable eco pads. I've not tried the Garnier ones. We'll give them a go. But yeah, this is an absolute staple everyday product that I use to remove at least the bulk of my makeup for an initial cleanse. I just, I find it really, really gentle on the eyes, but it works really easily. So you don't have to like rub for ages. It gets off all the mascara. So yes, I love that. And then lastly from Carousel, I love their shampoo and conditioner that I used. It's in the pink bottle. I think it's the color protecting one. I've just finished it. Um, and yeah, they've sent over a couple of products. Their liquid cuticle filler, spray into towel dried hair and leave in, nice and easy. We'll give that a go. And also in here is a recovery mask, Carousel as a brand. I mentioned it to my hairdresser when she last came over as a new shampoo, shampoo and conditioner that I was using. And she said, yeah, it's a good one, that good brand. So uh, yeah, recommend it if you haven't already tried it. Anyway, I think I'm gonna close off the video today here. As you can tell, I'm getting a bit itchy. I need to go to the pharmacy before it gets any worse. And uh, any recommendations on what to do with prickly heat? Obviously staying out in the sun would probably be a good starting point um but yeah let me know if you suffer with it if there's anything you would recommend i hope you've enjoyed spending the day with me today and i send you all my love and well wishes i hope you are all well and you know what if you're not well that's okay too we all have our down days just have a day <laughs> it doesn't have to always be a good day but anyway sending you all my love and i hope to see you all very very soon in my next video bye guys